An opening title card informs us of what happens in the early morning of April 9, 1940, where the German forces invade Denmark. The ill-equipped Danish army faces the strongest army in Europe. The most violent battles take place in the south of Jutland. The scene then shifts to April 8th a day before the skirmish, as 2nd Lieutenant Sand is being taken to the exercise field, where his squad is training. The directive comes from Lieutenant Germanson. Three soldiers are also heading there on foot. Private Graham, Colding, and Anderson were on break, but the enjoyment was cut short. They were not informed why. All they know is to ensure they arrive there on time. Sand arrives at the field and is greeted by Lieutenant Germanson. Sand is informed that there's an intelligence report about the ordnance movement in Kiel, a city in Germany. Apart from the ordnance, a train full of troops has also been detected on its way to the border. Germanson adds that a motorcycle company, led by Sergeant Bungard, is headed their way. Sand's squad will serve as their backup. The three soldiers arrive tardy. They are instructed to get their weapons and join the practice. Germanson orders Sand to assign the three men to kitchen duty for the week. The soldiers continue with their practice shooting. They have no inkling that they are hours away from their most challenging mission to date. After the shooting practice, they are tasked to change their bicycle's front tubes. Once done, they are asked to repeat the same drill over and again. Bungard wants them to finish the task in less than 90 seconds. While having their meal, a soldier on a motorcycle arrives. He has a message from Lieutenant Colonel Hintz. He wants the exercise to be called off, and all men are ordered to return to the barracks. They receive new intel that the Germans are advancing towards the border. The men must sleep in uniform and be prepared at all times. The soldiers are instructed to stop eating and return to the barracks with their bicycles. The men are then given 40 rounds of bullets each. They are told to prepare themselves and their equipment. Some soldiers are beginning to question if this is still an exercise it appears that something more significant is unfolding. Sand suggests that they inform the soldiers what's going on about the Germans marching towards the border. Germansen dismisses the idea, as it's not their responsibility. Sand writes a letter for his wife and then prepares his firearm. Danish officers receive a call from Checkpoint 3 that they are able to detect heavy activity on the border. The Germans are nearing. Lieutenant Colonel Hintz wants them to await further instructions. Hintz then requests to speak with the Major General. He proposes that his men be allowed to be dispatched to the border. They are 10 kilometers away. If they waited for the Germans to cross, it would be too late for his men to respond. His request is denied, as the directive to stand down comes from the higher-up. The Prime Minister deems it confrontational if they deploy troops before the Germans cross the border. Sand visits Sergeant Klostergaard's office and notifies him that both of them will conduct a room inspection. Private Anderson approaches Private Lassen, who is attempting to sleep. Anderson then requests that he relinquish his ammunition and pass it to Private Lundgren instead. Lassen opts to avoid confrontation and agrees. Private Graham advises him against it. Graham also instructs Anderson and Lundgren to return to bed. Anderson confronts Graham, insinuating that Graham does not want the Danish to succeed, as he is German. Graham's father is German. Justizen urges them to sleep as they are already disturbing those who are trying to sleep. He then faces Anderson. Before a brawl can erupt, the officers intervene. The officers are disappointed to see that the soldiers did not comply with instructions. The soldiers are given two minutes to remain silent. After that, all men are expected to sleep. While outside, Bungard tells Son that it's challenging for the soldiers to sleep in uniform. They then discuss what will happen once the Germans cross the border. Bungard's men will be the first in line, and Sand's men will provide support. The officers convene and are still hopeful that a direct confrontation will be avoided. Moments later, they are summoned to the radio room. They receive a new report from Checkpoint 3 and learn that the Germans have already breached the border and are launching an assault. The communication is then severed. Hintz informs his men that Denmark is now in a state of war. All the soldiers grab their gear and head straight to their bicycles. They are tasked to defend Lundtoftebjerg from falling until reinforcements from other barracks arrive. They then commence riding on their bicycles in full combat mode. In the morning, as they are nearing the border, the motorcycle company is heading their way. Apparently the Germans can't handle them, so they'll be relocating to another border. Lieutenant Germansen is astonished to hear that as their mission is to protect Lundtoftebjerg at all costs. They can't simply abandon the border like that. Bungard tells Sand to persuade the lieutenant to follow them. Lundtoftebjerg is beyond saving. Bungard and his squad then proceed to vacate the border. The bicycle company is now on its own. The officers devise a strategy, and the squad is divided into three. The men are now in their positions, awaiting the lieutenant's command. They are ordered to utilize the machine guns first as the Germans are employing armored vehicles. The squad waits 
knowing it's just a matter of time before the assault commences. Sand and his men can observe the armored vehicles of the Germans. He instructs his squad to await his signal. When they are given the go signal to commence firing, they are surprised that the bullets are just ricocheting off the enemy's vehicles. Moments later, two of the vehicles are advancing their way. Sand orders his men to retreat, but some fail to hear his command. One of the armored vehicles is disabled. While targeting the Germans on foot, the other armored vehicle trains its aim on them, and Colding is severely wounded. Sand checks on him. Knowing that he won't make it, Sand removes Colding's tag. Sand's men manage to flee from the Germans. They find a place to take cover. An elderly lady is startled to find out that armed men are in her house. Sand reassures her and requests her to remain silent. The squad is presently waiting to see if the Germans will succeed in locating them. After a few minutes, they are confident that they are now secure. Sand informs his squad that they are journeying northward. That's the direction of the command center and where they will rendezvous with Lieutenant Colonel Hintz. He designates Private Graham as his second in command. The squad vacates the premises. The elderly woman suggests they stay, but Sand explains they are at war, and his men prefer not to hide. The soldiers are back on their bikes. It's going to be a lengthy journey. Sand's men safely reach the command center, where they reunite with Lieutenant Colonel Hintz. The officer inquires if they are to defend Lund Toftebjerg. Hintz also seeks information about the lieutenant and the motorcycle company. Sand explains that they had to withdraw after being overrun by the German forces. He also reports that the lieutenant may have been captured and the motorcycle company has fled to a different border. Sand notices Hintz leaving the command center and inquires. The officer reveals that no reinforcements are forthcoming. The two barracks slated to send reinforcements will retain their soldiers to defend their territories. Hintz orders him to take his squad to Hatterslev and continue the fight there. There's nothing they can do for Lund Toftebjerg. Sand then informs his squad of their destination, Hatterslev. The soldiers push their bikes through the mountains. They pause for a break when Anderson's bike needs repair. Sand notices that Private Nuriskov is still distraught after witnessing Private Colding's death. He reassures him of the squad's support and learns that Nuriskov is engaged. A disturbance arises when Anderson confronts Private Graham for rushing him in, fixing his bike's tire. Sand intervenes to prevent escalation. The bike is repaired, and the squad resumes their journey. They meet up with the motorcycle company on the road. They are surprised that the locals are still there, unaware of the danger. Sand meets Sergeant Bundgaard, who explains explains they're using the area strategically, but the locals refuse to leave. Sand informs him of their withdrawal from Lundtoftebjerg due to unfavorable circumstances. Bungard asks about casualties among the Danish soldiers. Sand informs him of Private Kolding's death. He also reveals the lack of reinforcements and the new order to establish a defense line in Hatterslev. Bungard is incredulous and disagrees with the strategy, but Sand reminds him of the orders. The officers are alerted to the approaching Germans. The soldiers prepare as the Germans close in. Shots are are exchanged, resulting in a child's death. It's clear their weapons are outmatched by the Germans. Sand commands his men to retreat once more. They locate a lorry, load the bicycles, and evacuate the area. Private Eustason takes the wheel, and Sand instructs him to avoid the main road to evade the Germans. Eustason suggests using Logum Kloster Road for safety, which Sand approves. Eustason reveals he was born and raised in Haderslev and expresses his desire to marry and become a shopkeeper. The squad reaches Haderslev and reunites with the motorcycle company at a checkpoint. The road is blocked by soldiers, requiring Sand to explain the importance of allowing the two companies to pass. They are granted permission to proceed. Sand meets Colonel Hartz, introduces his squad, and reports to the officer. He informs Hartz that the Germans utilized armored vehicles and motorized infantry. The squad is then directed to a specific defensive position and assured of new ammunition supplies. Sand ensures strategic positioning of every soldier. Moments later, Germans on foot arrive, initiating a gunfight. When a tank arrives, they retreat again due Due to the inferiority of their weapons. Nuriskov and Anderson narrowly escape being killed by tank fire. Justison is wounded while attempting to flee. Sand instructs Graham to provide cover, while he and Lassen rescue the injured soldier and get him to safety. As the Germans close in, the squad continues to retreat. With Justison in critical condition, Sand faces a tough decision. Unable to continue the fight while one of his men needs medical attention, he chooses to surrender. They raise their hands, pleading not to be shot. Emotions are tense as the Germans assess the situation. Sand positions his men behind him, unsure if the Germans will open fire. The squad is captured by the German forces and the war ends. Sand distributes a box of cigarettes to everyone, and they all smoke together. Unfortunately, Eustazen dies, and afterward, they are ordered to line up and march. A German officer, Lieutenant Becker, inquires if anyone speaks German. 
Sand points to Graham. Becker introduces himself and talks to Sand while Graham translates for both of them. Lieutenant Becker questions why the Danish soldiers continued fighting after their government surrendered. Sand is bewildered, as he was unaware of Denmark's surrender two hours prior. Becker offers Sand a ride, but he declines, opting to stay with his men. Becker salutes him and Sand boards the bus with his men. On the bus, silence reigns, but grief and exhaustion etch themselves onto their faces. Private Graham weeps, his sorrow palpable. Meanwhile, Second Lieutenant Sand remains in a state of shock and frustration upon realizing the truth too late. As they journey, they pass by children playing near a German armored vehicle. The movie concludes with interviews of the actual individuals who experienced the war in Denmark on April 9, 1940. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.